Okay, we're going to tie a little carp fly for you. Um, this fly is tied on uh, one of Alan's new uh, MP003. It's a barbless hook, and it's just absolutely brutal. I mean, it's a really well-made hook. I like the bend of the eye and just really stout hook. Um, but before I do anything, go up to the corner of the page and subscribe. Okay? That way you'll be able to see all of our new videos coming out and uh, yeah cool stuff like that anyway I'm gonna start this fly with uh, some UTC 140 and fluorescent fire orange or something like that Curtis will correct me on the recipe but uh, also you'll see that we're using a new bobbin uh, this is the Stonfo it's like a disc drag thing or feels really good in your hand I, I've been tying with it quite a bit lately and I like it a lot all right, anyway, we're just going to dress the hook only to about there. And I'm going to attach some Allen uh, barbells with eye. Um, this is the four millimeter size. And you can even use bead chain for this if you're fishing really shallow water. But these eyes are, are, aren't super heavy. So I'm going to place it back so I can just put a little bit of stuff in front of it just kind of get that nice and attached on there now to seat that in place just to kind of make it a little bit more rigid I'm going to use some of this loon water based head cement I'm just going to keep all the thread right there okay now we're going to take our thread all the way to the back and kind of go down the bend a little bit. You got to imagine this this fly is going to ride upside down. So we want stuff uh, coming out of the bend. Now a trick when you're using a curved shank hook like this and you're tying down the bend is you can kind of reposition it in your vise for a little bit about like that. So it's maybe a little bit more natural to tie it in. Uh, this little hot spot is going to be made out of woolly bugger marabou. This is hot orange. Um, it's a really brilliant color. So I'm just going to take about that much, I'm just going to pull it right off the stem. And just kind of tie that in there. And then instead of trimming it, I'm just going to grab it with my thumbnail and just kind of pull it off. I'm going to trim off those fuzzies and then I'll just wrap this feather down onto the hook shank. Alright, another cool product that, that's brand new from Hairline is this Magnum, Magnum Predator legs. These are basically like silly legs, but they're twice as wide. And they're super long too, so we won't take advantage of the length of these right now. But as you can see, they are long. So I'm just going to take one of these bad boys and double it over, kind of fold it on top of itself kind of like that and I will tie both of those in on that side of the hook and then I'm just going to bring those back on the other side. So essentially now I have four of these magnum legs tied in the back of this fly. Now you might think that's that's pretty bulky. And I agree. I'm going to trim those off. And then I'm going to give each one of those a little bit of a trim job. And trim those to a point. So that's just going to kind of give it a little bit different motion in the water. You don't have to do that that uh, step. In fact, um, you can put use the micro grizzly legs as well. And as you can see on this one that I did, I did the micro legs on it. It looks really good as well. So it's it's just going to give you a little bit different action. Okay, now for the body, I'm going to use something that you probably have all seen now. Uh, it's Cohen's carp dub 
this one's crazy orange that we're going to use. So it's basically a cool dubbing with little rubber legs all mixed up in it. And I'm going to stick it in a loop because I don't want to bind it down too much. And I also find that, that dubbing it without using a dubbing loop is kind of difficult because these little rubber legs don't really bite in as well. So I'm going to use a Stonfo thread splitter. Um, you may have seen these before, but essentially you just stick your thread in this slot, poke, poke a needle through, and it splits your thread. Okay, so I'm going to take it, and if you rub it up and down like that, it'll kind of flatten out your thread a little bit before you use the splitter. All right. So I'm going to take a little bit of hairline touch dub wax and just start loading up that loop with some of the carp dub and if you're all about uniformity and it's gonna bug you that rubber legs are just going everywhere this dubbing's probably not for you but if you just care about awesomeness in your fly this is the dubbing for you. So I'm just going to twist my bobbin and let it spin up. I actually removed a little bit of dubbing from that one because I realized I had too much. Um, so I'm just going to take that and wrap that down about to right here. Um, so at this point I can take the fly and put it kind of more right side up in the in the hook. Now we're going to take just a, a wire brush or something and pick some of those fibers out. Some of them are going to be a little bit too long so I'll just kind of come in and trim them a little bit. Okay so now we're starting to look good. Now we're going to put on a little bit of a hackle collar. We're going to use some Whiting Coq de Leon uh, hen saddle. And this one is speckled orange. So I'm going to pick a, a size that matches up well with this fly. And I've created a tie-in point. So where that little notch, that little point of feather starts, that's where I'm going to tie it in. And this is from the tip. I'm just going to wrap this and this doesn't need to be the cleanest wrap job because I'm just going to wrap some dubbing in front of it to make it kind of position itself better around the hook. Okay, so we're starting to look real carpy right now. Then I'm going to make a, a little bit of a wing over the top of the fly with some rusty brown woolly bugger marabou. So it's just going to kind of go up over the top of the fly like that. Now I'm going to trim this before I tie it in. So I've got it trimmed. I'm just going to kind of stick it on top here. Now I'm just going to clean up the head a tiny bit by putting some pheasant tail colored ice dub and just kind of wrap that in between the eyes. Whoa. And then when you tie it off, um, make a little bit of a hot spot with your thread. I think that's the whole point of tying with the orange thread. Now I'll whip finish. And another trick about carp flies is if you can avoid using super glue or head cements on these at all, you should because carp can smell really well. And so one of the things, like you already saw me use this water-based head cement, it's very low odor. 
and so it's going to be less impactful on your fishing. So we'll just tag a little bit of it there. It will seep right in. But anyway, it's a little carp fly we've been working on. As you can see, you know, if we sit it right here on the vise like that, it, it kind of sits up and those tentacles kind of do their thing and wiggle all around. Really good carp pattern though.